Okay, this is Brent from TradeGuild.blogspot.com. One last video real quick. Um, basically, I want to give you a little closer look at um, blocks. Um, you're only seeing a, a portion of it because this video screen is so small, I can only fit so much on there without it being um, just overwhelming and just impossible to read. So you're not seeing all of it, but you're seeing um, a lot of the work screen. Basically, I have a whole bunch of indicators on here and if I want to take them off, you know, I can tab each indicator. So there's a little thumbtack here. I can just tab them off to the right and work with the ones I want to work with. Or I can just expand the ones I want to work with and um, then just put everything back to uh, the way it was. So I'm going to show you a couple of these indicators that I have on. Now, there's hundreds of indicators. And the coolest thing about it for me is that you can plot fundamentals and you can put them on a chart and that's about the only way I can understand fundamentals or make any sense out of them or make them useful. Um, so in the top window I have price history. So here's price history. Um, I've also got a back scanner condition attached to it. Um, basically that's a buy and a sell condition there, buy, sell. I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, and then the next thing I have on the screen is the rank. Okay, so what it is basically doing is ranking BPG, this one stock that I'm looking at right now, versus its industry, its its industry group, and it's saying um, what percentile rank is it in, and it's in the top one or two percent over here. It's up near a hundred. So, um, for instance, let's take a look at JDO. JDO ranks near the top. Uh, MGRM. Let's see where they come in. Uh, down in the bottom 40, um, PRW is up in uh, around the top 30%. So you can kind of just have a quick look at where your stock is in its industry group. You can find uh, maybe the strongest stops, stocks and groups or the weakest, and you can scan for all these. Basically, I can use the back scanner and a scan only function and find all the stocks that meet um, my requirements. So I'm going to tab this off to the side. One of the other kind of cool things I have, you can tab browsers. You can actually trade if you're with TD Ameritrade and I believe one other company. You can actually, they have something called trade sliders. I don't have it active because I don't have TD Ameri uh, Ameritrade. But basically, you can trade right off the chart. You don't even have to go anywhere else. You can just trade right off the chart. It syncs right up with them. But you can also um, sync up all kinds of browsers. Uh, I think, I'm not sure, but I think hundreds of different browsers they have. If you want earnings or if you want um, analyst estimates or whatever. I have a basic one here, Google Finance. So whenever um, I change the symbol, it automatically will pull up Google Finance for that symbol. So here's PRW. I go back to my bar chart. Maybe I change it to BPG. I go to my Google Finance browser, it changes it to BPG for me. So basically, um, it, it can do that with all the browsers, as many browsers as you want to hook up, and you can tab your browsers just like you tab your indicators, so that's really cool. Um, let me equalize all these panes, and I'm going to show you the next one is um, percent of shares held by institutions. So this is really a cool... Uh, indicator to have as far as plotting fundamentals because fundamentals in um, the traditional sense are very static you have a number unless you keep track of that number and where it's been in the past you don't really know where it is compared to where it's been so right now it's very easy for me to see I can look at uh, percent of shares held by institutions I can see um, back here in October November December it was up in, um, or actually September, October, is up around 35% shares held by institutions. Now it's somewhere is down around 10 or so. So that's a really um, a neat uh, tool to have. One of the things I want to show you, um, a couple stocks that have some interesting ratios. Look at JDO. It went from uh, about, what, maybe 2% in March up to 9%. Very nice. Um, PRW is another one I want to show you. This is one of the reasons I was considering maybe letting go of some of this. Uh, the institutional held, uh, holdings dropped a little bit. Actually quite a bit, almost by half or so. But uh, that's not completely uh, representative of all institutional buying because not all uh, people are required to report hedge funds have different requirements. Um, 
institutions have different requirements depending on how much they own of the company. Um, here's X. Look how bad X looks. I mean, it went from nearly 100% down into the 80s. Um, if we really just look at the last couple of months, you can see um, it's happened really since February, March, really. Um, and finally, RBY, I want to show you real quick. RBY, you can see that institutional sponsorship is continuing to, uh, to rise, to climb. So that's a, a kind of a neat little thing to use. So I'm gonna tab that off, equalize my panes. And the next one I'm gonna show you real quick, because I'm gonna run out of time here, is percent of shares held by insiders. Um, so here we go, BPG, 9.25% of the shares are held by insiders. And you can just look back at that historically and see where that's gone. You know, insiders are buying here, that's increasing. You know, that's not bad news. Um, Take a look at X. Here's um, U.S. Steel. You can see insiders, um, at least since 2005, primarily have been selling. So it gives you some interesting information, I think. Let me tab that off to the side. We'll look at the next one. And now there's hundreds of indicators. I'm just showing you a few that I use. Daily volatility. Okay, and why do we want to use daily volatility? Let's take a look at it with a chart. I'm going to pull up the S&P. Actually, I'm going to pull up the spiders. Okay, so here's the spiders, and we're going to zoom way back to price history. And what do we see? We see some spikes. It's daily volatility. But what happens at these um, spikes? They're turning points. There's a bottom. There's another bottom. Over here, there's a bottom. Over here, there's a top. So high volatility, these big volatility moves... Um, are sometimes indicative of turning points. So that's kind of an interesting thing to, um, to have and to use. Um, earnings in the millions and sales in the millions. Uh, why is that interesting? Uh, I don't know. I don't really know that much about fundamentals, but I guess you kind of um, take a look. Let's go to a company that has some earnings, I guess, here. Okay, so, you, you know, I'm sure you could find some interesting things. You see sales going up and earnings going down. Or maybe, you know, earnings going up and price going down might tell you something interesting. So those are two things uh, that I just have tabbed that I'm kind of fooling around with. And what else do I have on here? Uh, sales minus capitalization. This is that um, whole sales, sales to price um, ploy. You know, um, basically a positive value here. These are red. Uh, it's a negative value. So a positive value presumably is when you want to buy. Let's take a look at um, one stock in particular that I kind of thought was kind of interesting. And you might recognize it. There we go, Home Depot. Let's take a look back. Um, the last time that we had this green presumable um, buy from the sales minus cap figures was down here at the absolute bottom. And now we have this green um, go signal again. So if you believe in that sales to price um, strategy, then maybe Home Depot is a stock you might be interested in. So uh, these are just some of the neat kind of things you can do with this. Um, let me tab that off to the side. And this is, uh, I think, my last one I have here. Basically, this is Warden Stochastics. It's kind of cool. Um, you can set your own levels of um, overbought, oversold, where you want them to be for each particular stock. So you might find, okay, you know, when the stock um, dipped down here and it reversed, you know, this was uh, not the oversold part. This was over here. So I might want to just pull this down. Actually, it didn't really matter there, but. So um, that's just another interesting indicator, but there's a lot of really cool things on blocks. I'm gonna put up a link so you can download it and um, start checking it out a little bit. And, um, also Telechart, uh, I use both in conjunction, my um, blocks links right up with my Telechart. So I change a symbol in Telechart, everything changes in blocks, including all the browsers for Google or Yahoo Finance or whatever. And um, I'd appreciate if you sign up, we're an affiliate at Trade Guild, just mention um, our affiliate number A335 or just tell them you heard about them uh, through Trade Guild. We'd appreciate that. Thanks, check out the site at tradeguild.blogspot.com.